It's like a five o'clock flight. It's a little early, but uh, we're going to look at a bus. We'd been looking at the possibility of buying an old school bus and customizing it into an RV so we could travel full time. But after a lot of research and talking to several bus mechanics, we decided that the right bus for us was an MCI coach. Many people know the MCI brand of buses for their years of serving in the Greyhound fleet. And from what we learned, we narrowed our search to an MCI D3 40-foot bus with a Detroit Diesel 60 engine in it. our search to seated or gutted buses so we could customize it to a motorhome ourselves. You think you can fix that engine? Can I fix it? <laughs> yep. Hell no. <laughs> what kind of a question is that? <laughs> we narrowed our search to looking at buses with documented history of engine maintenance and very little rust. This is Mella. This is Don. And we're sharing our experience as we reduce our waste, create a more sustainable lifestyle, and reinvent our habitat. When we were ready to pull the trigger and got serious about going to look at buses, Don flew to Ohio to take a look at a silver 1995 MCI D3. first time I drove a 40-foot bus, I only drove about 10 feet, but it was pretty intimidating. We looked at several more buses in the West to meet our need. Got some pretty exciting news today. We bought a bus! We ended up finding a 1996 MCI D3 just a few miles from our house in Los Angeles. It had meticulous maintenance records and even our contact at MCI told us he knew the bus and thought it was in great shape. Home sweet home. <laughs> we bought the bus and now we had all the seats taken out and now it's got a few years of being a transportation bus so you might say it's a little grimy. We're gonna do a good cleaning today. Stainless steel, shiny. To help insulate it slightly for us to sleep in and to block out the light, we cut up um, these pieces of felt and made some curtains. And then we just have some really strong magnets that we are sticking them to the metal of the bus to hold them up. They're pretty powerful and they snap together pretty quick and I caught my finger and broke my skin open. I'm gonna be able to do that all the way across with the curtains as well as um, Reflectix because when last we checked it's gonna be down in the 30s what? on our drive across the country and since we haven't done any insulation, we haven't rebuilt any of the bus, we're gonna need it. I can't believe it's happening. Look. And it's gonna lead a lot of demo and then a lot of work. I think the hardest part of the whole thing thus far is trying to wrap my head around only focusing on the next step because there's so many things that need to happen before we can actually start driving this thing around. For our first big task, I enlisted some help from my brothers to help me install backup cameras and navigation. We're gonna take a look at this rat's nest. <laughs> this is the remnants of the old DVD player. And we're trying to find the power and the ground so that we can hook up the 
uh, backup camera and the navigation system. Yeah, so Burn has a great idea that we can actually reuse this piece that we pulled out from the center and get rid of this DVD player. I don't need too many DVDs going on while I'm driving. And then use this mount and repurpose it to mount the backup camera system monitor in there. unsuccessful wired camera quick setup we're back with a wireless setup we got the wireless camera wired up here it is here and here is the screen okay now we just gotta mount it to the back of the bus and see if we get a good signal here it is in all its glory backup camera two days and four people and we can finally see behind us we were bracing for the cost of filling up with diesel gas as this bus has a 150 gallon tank this whole time I thought our gas gauge was broken but we actually are full completely of gas <laughs> so we filled it up with one dollar and 26 cents. <laughs> Probably going to be the cheapest <laughs> gas. Uh... Cheapest gas we'll ever put into the bus. It only took me two days, three DMVs, a few phone calls, and I was finally able to get the title converted over to a motorhome. Our plan was simple. Buy a bus, pack everything we own into it, go glamping across the country, stop in the Midwest for six months to convert it for a tiny home on wheels, then start traveling full time. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> How's that wall coming? So this is the moment of truth. We decided to move with the bus. We didn't really do any kind of calculation or estimation. We just guessed that all of our stuff that we need would fit in and hoping it'll fit inside the bus.